Blog Talk Radio. <laughs> Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard. Natalie Jean, Natalie Jean. It's Nat. We're chatting with Nat. Today I have the awesome pleasure of having multi instrumentalist singer songwriter Emily Anderson. She is an awesome person. Awesome, awesome. Love her. Love her voice. I mean, she can, you need her, she can do it. She's just that amazing. Uh, like stumbling into a rose garden on a trek through the Arctic, listeners of Emily Anderson's music find themselves helpless, helplessly lifted into a world so hauntingly familiar and yet so enchantingly curious. Anderson's music is as shaped by this whimsical perspective as it is by her musical credentials. A multi-instrumentalist trained at the Berklee College of Music in Boston, Anderson fills her songs with images of nature, hope, and the solar system, not to mention a few puns. Anderson hails from Fairbanks, Alaska, and now splits her time between her hometown and Los Angeles. Let's give a round of a welcome to Emily Anderson. Yay! Hi, what an intro. <laughs> you know, well, thank this. you so much for having me. Yeah, what, who, who else would I have? I mean, I've had some amazing <laughs> guests. You know, you're part of that amazing, awesome category because you're just it. Oh. You are it. You do it. Oh, you you're do. it. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm happy me. to be here chatting with you. I'm so excited to have you. Um, so I'm just going to start off with this topic because this is just a huge topic right now, and we're going to talk about the Grammys. Did you get All a chance? Right. Did you get a chance to watch the Grammys? I did not. I feel like a bad musician in this way because I've never really um, paid attention to the Grammys. Like I didn't grow up like watching them with my family and like when I got to Berkeley uh, when I was like going to music school that's when everyone was like talking about them and like having Grammy watching parties and stuff and so like I've watched them in those contexts but right. yeah I I haven't really paid attention to them <laughs> All right, then. Well, let me uh, I know so I've actually gone to the Grammy six times. Let me just tell you, I've, I've been there. I've actually oh, been awesome. To the, I've walked the red carpet, yippee ki yay. Uh, but my you. yeah, yeah, right. Um, so what I love most about going to the Grammys is the party, the after party. But in order to do that, you have to get a ticket to the the main event. Um, but the mm-hmm. best thing about the main event is the um, daytime show is what you guys don't see on TV. You guys see the nighttime show. And so um, I didn't watch it myself, uh, but there was so much hubbub about a, a particular performance that I had to go look at the, the performance on YouTube. And so here's the mm-hmm. deal. It's Car- Cardi B and Megan Stallion. Um, they performed their song WAP, WAP, whatever. I don't know how you say that. Amazing. Um, yeah, they performed it. The performance was kind of raunchy. And I don't know what well, people, you know, if, if you listen to the lyrics, you would know that, that that's what was going to come back. So um, mm-hmm. everybody's mad at Cardi B and Megan Stallion or at Cardi B. <gasps> um, now, I watched the, the performance. Now, there are some areas I have to say that could have been toned down just a little bit. But overall, the, the choreography was my fine in my opinion. There's just a section where. You know, Cardi B split her legs open. I mean, you can, you can literally see all the way in there. So, um, so there, <laughs> you know, if, if if it were cable TV, I wouldn't have a problem with it because it's just cable TV. Basically, you can almost have anything on there. So, but mm-hmm. um, and but at the same time, I don't like to take away from an artist's creativity. Grammy right. obviously knew who they were. They invited mm-hmm. them on. They knew what was going to happen. Obviously, you know, it's all about money and everything. They wanted to track mm-hmm. the 
big audience. Now people are in uproar. You know, people are calling the FBC or demanding or, or crying at the Grammys. Why did you let this happen? So, and then mm-hmm. I've seen conversations on Facebook where people are going at each other. One guy was actually for these women, and one woman was against this. This is a family show, this, that, and other. I don't know if it's a family show anymore, not just because of this a performance, but because of a lot of past performances, you know, and, and mm-hmm. it could be family. It just depends on what you allow your children to see and how you explain the whole thing. You could say it's just art. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. even if you haven't seen the video, what is your perspective on artist creativity? Should we bash them? Should we name call them? Or should we allow them to create? Because I know I don't want anybody to tell me what to do with my, my music and my artistry. So what right. do you think about I think that the the dynamic between artistry and censorship has always been uh, mm-hmm. a conversation and a center of controversy. And you know, I I I haven't seen the performance, but like just from your description, like I I don't know. I feel like artists are kind of like the catalyst for pushing those boundaries and asking those questions of like why do we find this so offensive like is it because it's a woman's body is it because it's sex and we as a culture like don't like we are like obsessed with it but we're also like very uh like finger wagging like shaming (laughs) about it at the same time so there's like this weird double standard especially for women um, like you have to be like sexy, but also virginal. And like, I don't know, we saw that too with like, I, I watched that Britney Spears documentary and like mm-hmm. all the, all the stuff that she had to deal with, with that backlash and, and, you know, amongst many other things. Um, mm. but I don't know. I feel like, uh, in 50 years, that's not going to be the conversation, you know, like it's going to be something else. There, there are so many things that have changed in music and art that were scandalous, you know, 50 years ago, <laughs> even 20 years ago, that are just like run of the mill, norm, like normal today. Right. So I kind of feel like artists are. I kind of admire like artists that kind of push the boundaries and and have a, like have us ask these questions and have these conversations because. Um, that's a reflection of our culture and that's a reflection of, um, you know, how, how do we see ourselves and what, uh, do we like about ourselves and what don't we like and what do we want to change? Um, so I don't know. That's my two cents about it. I, uh, I'm not about to like shame no. other women and like other artists and I, I just, I love that song. <laughs> I think that song is awesome. <laughs> uh, so, you know, so be it. No, I, I love that. But you know what was fascinating and what I was looking at yesterday in the conversations was that a lot of women were bashing, you know, Cardi B and Megan Stallion and calling them sluts and whores and whatever. I mean, Cardi B is a former stripper. That's okay. There are plenty of women that have to, had to strip because they try to make a living so they could support their families and, and stuff. I yeah, know, absolutely. I've known some strip to get through college. So I think stereotypically they just have a world view about, you know, women that are performing like that. But the other thing for me, there's an aspect about the black woman, black woman. So stereotypically, sometimes people think that uh, black women are just these sexual beings and that's all they're, they're right. worth. So mm-hmm. when they see something like that, that's where I have a problem with it. That's the only, you know, when they see something like mm-hmm. that, they think the whole, all of us are just like that. You know what? As an artist, they should be allowed to do what they want. The Grammys do what they right. were getting to do. Um, they shouldn't try to tell somebody how to create their art. I mean, the things that were coming out of these people's writings on Facebook was just shocking. And yet there was this one guy was just like, you guys need to get over yourselves. They performed. It was great. And one guy even said, this is what they do with that kind of genre. So you have mm-hmm. to do in perspective. And everybody was, oh, well, my son was watching it. Okay, if you didn't want your son to watch it, you know, there's a two, there's a thing that calls turn off. Or you, right. you, you move into another room or you explain what the situation, oh, this is just art. Because the only mm-hmm. way that you see something bad is when you point something out. 
because children don't know anything. They're just like, oh, I like that dancing. Oh, that's cool, blah, blah, and you move on until you make it a big right. deal. You see what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That's why I think people, and this is a great segue, will love your song, Hugs, because I think everybody <laughs> needs <laughs> I think it's my sexy new single. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh. Yeah. So tell everybody about your new single. Uh, yeah. So I, my latest song that I just released in February is called Hugs, and um, it's something that I wrote in quarantine. When I was quarantining in my in my parents' basement, um, and. I just, it was one of those songs that just kind of like spilled out of me and like, it's one of those wonderful songwriting moments that we, we live for, you know, when, when it feels like the song is already written and we're just writing it down. Um, Mm. And so I decided to record it and the way that we recorded it is really special. It's um, all of my friends from all over the world, um, in their own little quarantine bubbles, uh, Mm -hmm. singing in closets or in their own, like, home studios. You know, musicians had to really get creative and make it work uh, during this pandemic. And so it's lovingly piecemealed together. So it sounds like we're all in the same room together, but really we're we're all over the place. Um, Mm -hmm. And so the, the chorus is all about, I can't wait to hug all my friends again. And especially as the vaccine is coming out and like people are, you know, getting those wonderful COVID vaccine cards and posting them to their social medias. Like I, it just makes me really excited and hopeful and optimistic. Cool. So we're going to have a word from our sponsor and then we're going to play hug. Hold on. What? Hi, this is Nikki Chris, and I host a podcast called Mixin' It. Mixin' It focuses on women in the music, entertainment, and the performing arts. Our goal is to provide an avenue for industry veterans and up-and-coming artists, musicians, engineers, and producers to showcase their talent. Listen to Mixin' It on Monday Music Madness at 8 p.m. Eastern on the Sim Radio Network.
a clapper, damn it. <laughs> oh. I was singing you along. I can't wait to hug you again. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Oh, I love it. It's a crazy oh, tune. We were, yeah, man. I wish I could have gotten your your vocals on this. <laughs> okay. Next time, well, next time, I'll, I'll send you tracks to sing on. <laughs> Listen, you got my, you got my contact. You can. I know. Now I know. <laughs> now you know, you know, you know, you can use me. All right. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I love that song and I think you know while I was listening to it I was like I could see it in a film I could see it in a documentary I, I, hell I could see it on a tv commercial that song is easy. so and if anybody's listening out there <laughs> yeah I, hell, I'm hoping that that happens too because I, I got it I've got it in a few catalogs that they're, okay. they're pitching to people so fingers crossed you know <laughs> Like Super Bowl, if you're listening, you know. Yes. <laughs> yes. I was thinking that, and I was thinking, my God, they could even use it next year for the Super Bowl. You know, when they have all of those commercials where everybody, millions of people see it. That's mm-hmm. where. That's the dream. That's the dream. So let's talk about that. Now, you you um, write for a lot of what sync and licensing. Yeah, that's been something that I've gotten into in the last year or so. Um, and really, I, I mean, I got one, one of my songs placed in, uh, Miller Lite ad, uh, oh. last year and that was insane. Um, so yeah. since then, uh, you know, I've just really been continuing to write and collaborate with as many people as possible and, um, started, you know, figuring out, okay, well I could, get these songs into some licensing catalogs and the stars have to align multiple times in order for, um, you know, another placement like that to happen. So I'm just, you know, I just want to keep on making music that I love and um, make music that can serve other people too. So in whatever form that takes, I'm just going to keep on doing it. (laughs) Yeah. You do music full time, right? Yeah, I feel extremely lucky um, to get to do this as a job. So I, I mean, I also teach and uh, right. write commissions and and do all sorts of stuff. So it's never a dull moment. <laughs> now, what what is the craziest thing that you had to do for music? Well, I know, like you do this as a profession. Like all of us want to do it like full time. That's what I'm aspiring to do right now so what's the craziest thing you've had to do for music oh gosh <clears throat> the craziest thing I've had to do for music um <laughs> well like one of the things that I never would have expected to do for music is um I wrote some songs for video games and I'm not mm-hmm. really a gamer like I've never really been a part of that world and um so I got to write uh, a couple songs for some video game soundtracks um, with a good friend um, and collaborator. And I had like, <laughs> I had just like no idea how amazing this world and this, like the video game world and that industry is. And like, it's so beautiful and there's so much art and creativity that goes into it. And um, like really awesome story arcs and, like it's just it's an art form it was it was really fun to like get to learn about it and so I would say that that's probably like the one of the career things that I've done that I never would have expected to do (laughs) um yeah I think that and um writing songs in a group setting um so that's been something that I not just like co-writing with other co-writers, but like writing songs with people who have never written a song before. Maybe they don't even play an instrument. They don't sing like nothing. Um, And that has been one of the most rewarding um, things that I've done as well. Just getting to kind of facilitate and be that like tool, I guess. I'm just a giant tool. Um, (laughs) 
to to facilitate someone being able to express their emotions through a song, um, that's been really cool. So I got to write with some, uh, you know, middle schoolers and high schoolers in Nenana, which is a village uh, right outside of Fairbanks in Alaska. And that was one of those, like, the, those kids are just amazing. And I also got to write with some kids from Healy, which is another little small town right outside of Fairbanks. And um, then I've also gotten to work with um, veterans. We wrote an amazing song together. That was really cool. Um, yeah, so just like all sorts of people, all ages, all different walks of life, um, I've just learned so much from listening and um, right. being a part of those moments. That's so awesome. Your song is in my head. Um, Yay. <laughs> that's the goal. <laughs> Like Emily, 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 you're in my head, which is good. Because <laughs> they, call that, they call that an earwig. Uh, oh, an earworm. So earworm. In, earworm. In, earworm. in German, it's like Orgum. <laughs> Orgum. I've got it. I've got it. Um, so, so, you know what? I do have to tell you that I am taking up that thing that you did the other day that, that challenge. The 30 day, uh, write the song for 30 days. You're doing it? Oh my gosh, no. I'm so excited. Yeah. I was supposed to start yesterday, but I'm starting today. <laughs> because I got Amazing. Started. Oh, I'm so excited for you. But today's the day. Because I said, Emily, I, I like her. She's doing it. I can do it too. Um, you can do it. So, how would you describe your music? Oh, that's. Every musician's favorite question. <laughs> um, I would say that it's kind of like indie folk pop um, as far as genre. Um, and like some of my some of my biggest influences are like Regina Spector, Carole King. Um, lately I've been listening to a lot of Sam Phillips. I don't know if you know who that is, but um, she's an amazing writer and uh, – yeah, I've just been really loving her music. Um, yeah, so just like honest folk pop music, essentially. I like that. But I'm actually, this, this next record is going to be a little different, so I'm I'm like excited how um, how it's turning out. So I, yeah, I don't know. I like being a songwriter first and foremost. So I feel like that kind of transcends genre but of course all musicians are like you can't put a genre on me <laughs> so <laughs> I know. i'm not alone in feeling that <laughs> I just mm. genre, multi-genre but mm-hmm. you know if somebody does ask me you know i love americana that's what i'm doing now so i'm just gonna stick to that um but you know i'm open because you know as artists being able to be versatile is a huge thing because you can get your oh yeah in so many different places by being versatile. Mhm. You know. I totally so, agree. More power. You don't want to do the same thing the, your whole life. Like that's just not how we're built, really. Like we're curious creatures, and we want to explore different sounds. And some days we're gonna feel more in a jazzy mood. Some days we might feel like we want to write an angsty rock pop song you know <laughs> so I, I think that it, it it takes all kinds it takes all all genres and moods amen to that um what is your biggest musical challenge mm, my biggest musical challenge i would say my own self-doubt and fear okay um i definitely struggle a lot with like the imposter syndrome Mm. feeling and and just feeling like i'm not good enough and i think that's something that i'm not alone in feeling (laughs) especially 
I'm friends with a lot of musicians, so I, I totally get it. Um, <laughs> uh, but I would say that's, that's for me the biggest mental hurdle and, and the biggest challenge um, is just my own self getting in the way of what I know deep down that I am capable of and what I'm supposed to do. Like, this is my job. This is my purpose. And I feel really strong way about that. But sometimes my brain is just like, hmm, but what if we're terrible? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I get that. And I, and I think you're right. I think a lot of musicians, if not all musicians, go through the same thing. But I have to tell you, um, you are extremely gifted. And any time you oh, ever you. Have, you remember my words. Okay. You, <laughs> you were born to do music. I I keep saying that. You know, the first time we met and you're just like, oh, you came up with the melody. And you know what? Maybe that doesn't happen every single time, but you did it so quickly. It is in you. There's in and, and the mm. song Bugs is still in my head, damn it. So that means <laughs> That you are good at what you do, and I, you know, and we all, and like I said, we all have that moment, those moments where we're just like, oh, I don't know if I want to do this. Am I good enough? Is this going to be good enough? As long, you know what I believe, mm -hmm. you put love and your energy and your your passion into whatever you do, somebody's going to gravitate to it, whether it's a record yeah. producer, whether there's a music supervisor, or is it just a friend or a new fan, somebody's going to mm -hmm. say, oh my gosh, Emily Anderson. I have got to listen to more of her music. She's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. She's She's empowering. She's great. Because these are all the things, since I've met you, these are the only things that I see of you. These are the only things that I can see because of the fact that I'm, I listen to your music and it, it's like still stuck in my head and Emily's still stuck in my head. And, and you, have, <laughs> you have a beautiful personality. So you put all that together and, it, and you just have just an amazing person all together. So Remember my words. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's so, that's so sweet of you. Yeah, no, but I, I see, you know, it's all about speaking the truth, and I speak my truth here on on this platform and throughout life. So, mm -hmm. um, you're amazing. So, tell us about the other song you gave us called Gold. Yeah. So, Gold is, um, maybe the favorite thing favoritist that's the word now um <laughs> i've i've released um it's the song about grief and healing and uh transformation and it it means a lot to me and so this that song is actually it's going to be on on the next record and it, it was a big source of you know the thesis of of the record and exploring all those different moments in in grief and healing and friendship and all of that in between. Um, and Gold was also the song that got placed in that Miller Lite ad. So it was life-changing to me in multiple ways. Um, one, it was just a really healing song to write, and I'm really grateful for um, songwriting in that way that I can process complex and heavy emotions and then also make other people feel less alone when they are processing their own grief and complex emotions. Um, so yeah, gold, gold is one of those songs that has changed my life in, in many different facets. And I'm very grateful for that. All righty. Well, we'll have a word from our sponsor, and then we'll play the song. Hold on one moment. Hi, it's Jordan. And Madison. And we're Jay Madison out of Nashville, Tennessee. We'd love to tell you about B-Squared Management, artist services by artists for artists. Get your press, branding, single release, and sync success plan now at bsquaredmgmt.com. And listen up to our latest single, Down, now on Spotify.
mean, it's beautiful. It's touching. It's, are you gonna do? You, are you going to have a music video for it? I actually just had a meeting with a videographer about <laughs> making a music video for it, and I've been wanting to for a long time, but. I wanted to do it justice, and music videos are expensive, and so yeah. I haven't been able to afford it. Right. Um, and so with the help of my, my Patreon community, um, mm. I'm going to be able to make this video, which is awesome. really exciting. So so we're going to probably film, shoot it in June is the plan. Oh, so, I know it's going to be so moving and touching because um, the song itself already is moving and t- touching and then you give a visual to it it's just going to be so amazing and you know wherever yeah, you're, I'm, wherever you're I feel like is. I'm in a place now where I'm ready to like I think that if I had tried to make a video right out the gate I right. it would have been a little too raw um, and like I've done a lot of work and gone to a lot of therapy and and so I feel like at this point I feel ready to um to really make it beautiful and make it real and vulnerable um while still making it like safe for me and I I want to feel like I'm at a safe and healthy place yeah, I I mean I can't wait to see it. I mean your vocals are just amazing on it, and wherever your your friend is in spirit, I'm sure she's gonna love it. Mhm. It's yeah. her birthday today, actually. Yeah. So this is like really some weird <laughs> universe stuff is happening today. I think. <laughs> yeah, but it's all it's all There's good. There's been a lot of a lot of little like nudges and stuff from her today, so that's been really cool. Yeah, that no, that's awesome. You know, we can oftentimes get get messages from loved ones that pass, and sometimes they would come in weird ways, and sometimes you're just like, oh, okay, they're nudging me. Mm-hmm. Oh hi. <laughs> oh, it's like oh hi. It's like oh hi back. Um, I miss you. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to get through this. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's going to be amazing. I can't wait to see it. Um, are you? yet. <laughs> am I what? On Clubhouse? I am. I haven't really like I haven't uh, what participated. Is your... <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I, I just got I just got in Clubhouse and it seems really cool. Um so yeah, find me or I'll find you. Um yeah, I'll find um the reason I broke we'll that hang. Yeah, no, we got to hang. Maybe we can do our own room because you can do like a, you can create your own chat room, group thing. Um, so when you create a group, I think it stays there forever. But what's interesting about the conversations, which I, I know why they did it, is like once the conversations are there, they're gone after you have them. And so nobody mm-hmm. can go, say, well, you said this and I'm going to sue you. Um mm-hmm. <laughs> But I've I've been on it a lot, so I get notifications all the time for it now, which is great because um, so this one woman, her name is Empress, and she's do, been doing a lot of uh, chats or conversations about um, independent music, metadata, music supervisor think, you know, giving people tools on what they should use, different websites, oh, cool. do things like look on LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, Instagram, how to find them, this, that, and the other. It's a lot of information to the point that I'm like, I said I needed one clone. I may need five clones. I'm like, because I told her yesterday, she's on there all the time. I said, do you even sleep? But she's giving people a lot of information. It's not just her. I had one, another super uh, music supervisor that does film and all that stuff, and he was explaining stuff. And what's great about it is it's different because people are willing to share their information with you. Whereas if you go on LinkedIn or blah, 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 you know, they're not as apt to say, okay, let's exchange emails here. Once you're in a group, you can mm-hmm. look at follow them, and then you can exchange, you know, social media platforms and stuff like that. So it, it has been a great tool um, for networking. So I always advise everybody to get on there. So I definitely... Mm-hmm. Uh, find you um, and tag you on anything that's useful for you. Um, and there's been pitch sessions on it. It's just, this is bizarre. The whole thing is bizarre, but it was 
Oh, cool. Yeah, it's it's a really brilliant concept. I think Twitter has one called Faces. Some people can get it, some people cannot, because it's still in uh, test phase. Obviously, they stole the idea from Clubhouse, but hey, everybody wants something. <laughs> um, so now, what is one quote that you that you like to use that is something that's special to you? Hmm. Oh, this is a good, good question. Um. So, this is the first thing that just came to my mind. So I'm just going to say it. Um, but there is a prayer that we had to memorize in high school. Um, I went to a Catholic high school, and so um, we had we had religion class. And there was one prayer that we had memorized, and I, I love this prayer. Um, it's the prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And it's the one that goes, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Yes. And I love that prayer. And I think that there is there's a part that goes, grant that I may not so much seek to be understood as to understand. Mm. Um, and then it's like to be loved as to love and I think there's one more line that um, goes in there but I I say that prayer to myself a lot um, because I think as as a human and as a musician um, we're in a service industry so we're we're like called to serve essentially and so um, and especially in in you know, in this world where things are so divisive and difficult sometimes, um, it's it's important that we remind ourselves to seek to understand rather than, than to be understood sometimes. And I think that, like, if I can remind myself to be an instrument of peace, that can only be a step in that right direction. That's awesome. I love that. I love that. Now, tell our audience where they can find you online. Oh, gosh. Also, first of all, I just want to say I love that this conversation went from WAP to the Prayer of St. Francis. (laughs) (laughs) What ground we have covered. (laughs) I love that. Oh, man, we are... This this was great. Thank you so much. Um, you can find me at emilyandersonak.com is my website, and um, Emily Anderson AK for Alaska is where you find me on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm I'm on TikTok now, Emily Anderson Music, um, and my Patreon. Um, if you're interested in joining my Patreon community, I do lots of unreleased songs, some behind the scenes for my songwriting process, Um, lots of really fun stuff there. I do custom songs for my patrons, too. Um, So that's at patreon.com slash emilyandersonak. All righty. Well, Emily, it has been a pleasure. It has been my honor to have you on chatting with Nat because you are simply put, and you must remember that all. You're awesome. You are the I feel so honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you. And I will find you on Clubhouse. And I know I, we follow each other on my personal TikTok, but I'll find you for the Sisters in Music one so you can do the duet thing. And yeah, Sweet. let's continue. Huh? Great. No, let's, let's, continue. Hang. let's hang. Let's continue to stay in touch. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow your music. Hugs is still in my head. And then eventually someday <laughs> we'll, we'll be able to hug. I know. Oh, I can't wait. Soon. Can't Someday wait. soon. Someday soon. So thank you so much and have an awesome day. Oh, thank you. You too. Thank you. Chatting with Nat is a podcast for independent women seeking to speak their truth and to break down barriers. We host honest conversations that help to guide and empower women. Speak your truth and set yourself free. Let your voice be heard.
Love you.